Hi, my name's Niall Coates and I'm a sound designer. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of some of the sound design and game engine implementation that went into my most recent project. This project involved using Unreal Engine 4 to create an original, playable level and populating it using F1 Studio with sounds that I designed myself. If you haven't already seen or played the finished level, I would suggest either watching my UE4 slash F1 sound design and implementation video or downloading the level and having a play around with it first. You can find the download link and the video on my website homepage at www.nilecoatsaudio.com. My goals from the start of this project were to gain a deeper understanding of Unreal Engine 4 blueprints and FMUD Studio, and then to use this knowledge to create an interesting, playable experience. For the genre of this level, I decided to go with a dark, industrial style. I wanted to go pretty in-depth with the ambiences, and I thought this choice would help me create something really dense and immersive. So let's begin with... The ambiences. For the main ambience, I wanted to create something more dynamic rather than just have a stereo ambience and some scatterer sounds. I started building with a stereo ambience in a 2D FMOD event created from a heavily filtered recording of a crowd of people in a coffee shop, along with some slight white noise. Then I slowed down some sounds of elevators and heavy metal springs being manipulated and added them to a scatterer instrument in another 2D FMOD event. Finally, to create the dynamic feel, I made two 3D FMOD events and designed some interesting industrial loops built from things like recordings of heavy chains rattling and mechanical movement. You can hear in this example how the sounds pan as the player moves around the level. To help worldize other sound effects, such as Foley elements, I used Audio Things Fog Convolver Convolution Reverb. Fog Convolver allows you to tweak imported impulse responses as you need and then also export them. This was an incredibly useful method for getting custom impulse responses into FMOD's Convolution Reverb. I found an impulse response online of a claustrophobic cave system that really fit the tone of the level and sent small amounts of different sound effects to this reverb to help acoustically fit them within the virtual space. Ambience Occlusion one of the other ambiences in the level is a stereo sound for a large fan room. This room was hidden behind a thick metal door and I wanted to simulate some occlusion properties through the door. I created a mixer group for the fan room ambience called Hangar Ambience here and added an EQ with a harsh low pass filter to simulate occlusion through the door. A snapshot is then triggered via a custom event within the sequence for the door movement. This reverts the low pass back to a flat EQ using a 1.5 second attack ADSR on the snapshot intensity. I also automated the pan override for the sound so that as the player approaches the source of the sound, being the centre of the room, it slowly changes from a 3D position sound to a 2D stereo sound. This helps simulate the sound slowly enveloping the player as they enter the room. Another instance of occlusion added was more utility based, ducking the volume of the small fans in the corridor when the player moves into the first room. This was achieved using a similar snapshot method. Parameter timelines and conditions. For the water section in the level, I wanted to create a system that could tell whether the player was falling or wading into the water and a way to play different sounds for each situation. I ended up using two different parameters, one called Water Amb, that was set by a trigger box in Unreal, and another called Water Impact. The value for Water Impact determined whether the player was falling or walking at the point when they enter or exit the trigger box. A Get Velocity node targeting the player character paired with a clamp on the Z axis calculated the speed of the player in the air as a float variable. The branch node and negative 1 multiplication kept the number positive. No matter whether the player was jumping up or falling down, 
basically showing if the player was moving in the air. Everything took place on the water amp timeline in the FMOD event, with water impact used as a condition to determine whether a falling impact sound or a slow waning sound should play. Along with these sounds, I used a snapshot instrument to apply a low pass EQ and also created a nested event to house the various sound effects for the underwater ambience. Here's a few demonstrations of how the system works all together. I used a more conventional parameter timeline method for the fire at the end of the level, using a distance parameter to fade in different layers. This helps to keep the sound nice and dynamic as the player moves around it. Creating looping dynamic sounds from linear recordings. For the sound of the strip lights, I recorded a semi-broken light in my garage that happens to make some interesting pops and clicks. I used Isotope RX to isolate and bounce out the individual pops and clicks from the recording, then created a loop of the light humming. I also added a compressor to the hum track and sidechained it to the pop and click track to duck the humming slightly when a pop or click played. Since there's a chance for multiple strip light events to play at the same time, I randomised the start offset for the hum track to prevent any phasing issues. Foley. When it came to the character Foley, I was interested in doing something a bit more than just implementing a surface switching system for footsteps. One of the inspirations I had was from Creative Assembly's Alien Isolation, in which slight Foley sounds play when the character rotates on the spot. To first get some original source material, I recorded some clothing Foley using a stereo pair of AKG414s and a Rode NT2A. This all took place at a recording studio at my old university. Since the sounds were very finite, I wanted a nice clean recording with a good signal to noise ratio. I also tried to match the clothing I recorded with what I imagined the character to be wearing, in this case overalls and more abrasive, robust gear. The Foley session was then edited and batch processed through Pro Tools. To implement the edited sounds, I adapted a pre-existing blueprint that calculates the current speed of rotation for the first person character. This blueprint sets the world rotation of the player character for two consecutive frames and then compares the difference between each number. For example, moving from your 50 to your 60 within one frame gives a difference of 10. The faster that rotation is, the bigger the difference, and that difference as a float variable is used to affect an FMOD parameter. In the FMOD event, I added two different audio tracks and instruments for the Foley. One for when the rotation speed is faster and one for when it's slower. These contain the heavier Foley sounds and the lighter sounds respectively. The parameter then moves through the sounds in each track as its value increases. To help prevent overlapping the rotation Foley with Foley mapped to the walk animation, I added a snapshot instrument on each of the footstep events. This ducks the volume of the Foley rotation when the player takes a step to help stop the Foley track from becoming overwhelming. You can hear in this example how the Foley increases in intensity as the rotation speed increases. Physics Collisions when working on part of the level where the ship begins to violently shake, I had an idea to add some physics simulation. I decided to keep it fairly minimal and went with a metal can that falls off a shelf and rolls around on the floor. To get the source material for the sounds, I recorded some foley of various tins rolling around and impacting the floor of my garage. These were recorded with a Zoom H6 and a Rode NTG2. In Unreal, I calculated the velocity of the can each time it collided with another physical surface, 
and reined in the numbers to something more usable using a division and clamp node. I then assigned this float to a parameter in fmod which then played a louder rattling sound when the number was higher and a softer rolling sound when the number was lower. I also used some volume and pitch automation on both the timeline and parameter timeline to make it a bit more interesting. Dialogue I booked out a recording studio at my old university for the dialogue recording since I wanted to help keep the audio as clean as possible. My microphone of choice was the Rode NT2A and the dialogue was performed by one of my good friends who has some experience with voice acting. For the performance of the dialogue, I took some screenshots of the level as a reference for my actor and gave him some direction in terms of the emotional state of the character. This really helped him with the tone and feel of the performance when reading out the script. We also went over the script a few times before the session to make sure that everything read well and made sense. After editing all the takes together in Pro Tools, I added some compression and EQ to help brighten them up and pull the dynamic content together. For the mix, I grouped the player dialogue into a mixer group and added a sidechain to it. This sidechain then affected a compressor on the master sound effect mixer group, ducking the sound effects slightly to help the dialogue sit into the mix. I then sent some of the mixer group to the convolution reverb to help match the dialogue to the acoustic space. For part of the level where a black box recording is played, I used a few synthesis and sampling methods to create some glitchy effects for the dialogue to simulate the file or recording system being damaged. The Mangle by SoundGuru played a big part in this, allowing me to scrub through the recordings to get a good stutter effect. I also used McDSP's Footsbox to degrade the quality an appropriate amount. I also used a method by prominent cool guy and Ableton user, Mr. Bill, which involves boosting the level of a sound by 210 dB, yes you heard that correctly, then adding a time-based effect such as reverb and limiting it. This accentuates usually unheard digital artifacts within these effects and can give you some really interesting sounds. For example... I resampled some of the more interesting outcomes and added them to the dialogue along with some samples from sample packs and some nice static drones. Here's the final glitchy parts without the dialogue. Complex sound design and environmental response. When it came to the more complex sound design for the level, I used mainly sounds from sample packs since I knew I would find it difficult to record weighty mechanical sounds myself with the equipment I have. Since all of the complex sounds were going to be quite loud and heavy, I also came up with the idea of an environmental response for each sound. The idea was a kind of call and response in which other objects in the level would react to the audio source. So, for example, the body of the ship creaking and settling, in response to a heavy door moving. I found that this helped to fit the sounds within the world a bit more accurately, and also made them feel more enveloping to the player than a positioned 3D sound usually would. In terms of designing the sounds this way, I created two groups in Ableton per sound, one for the object and one for the response of the environment. Here's an example of the sound of the sliding door. And here's the environmental response for the door. Finally, here they are together in Unreal. Both these sounds were designed using a lot of layers and I mostly just used EQ and compression to shape each layer. This method was also used for the hinge door, the steam blast and the lift in the level. Music. Kind of. So there's not really any conventional music in the level, but I did add some non-diegetic sounds at the beginning and the end during what could probably be best described as the cutscene sequences. These sounds had a drawn out ghostly quality about them and were actually created from recordings of bored bike spokes which I had made in the past just for the hell of it really. 
I found that slowing them down and drenching them in reverb really added to the creepy sci-fi theme. Here's a sound I designed using only one of the bike spoke recordings, with the raw recording playing first. I used Audio Damage's EOS 2 reverb with these sounds, rather than a convolution reverb, to really add some otherworldly tones and texture to them. It also helped fill out the stereo field, since the spoke recordings were just mono samples from a single microphone. Alongside that, I used a variety of samples in the layering for the music, as well as distortion, resonant filters, bit crushing and tremolo plugins to add some interesting texture to certain layers. Here's an example of the sounds at the end of the level. Optimization. To cut down on the number of looping events playing through the level at any one time, I added trigger boxes around the source of some of the looping ambiences. This allowed me to stop the events from playing when they become inaudible, and also start them again when the player goes back to them. I used this method on the fire sound at the end of the level, the small fans in the corridor, and the ambience for the fan room. In addition to this, I added a set bool function on the box overlap. This uses a branch node to circumnavigate any event parameters from being updated when inactive, which was previously causing me some issues. A similar function was used for the strip lights dotted around the level, using a spherical trigger to stop or start the event. This cut down the number of strip light event instances at any one time from 19 to between 0 and 2. All of this was to free up some CPU usage so that it could be better used for other aspects of the game. Granted, it doesn't make much of a difference in a project this size, but it's a good rule of thumb to keep. I think at this point I've probably discussed most of the more interesting conceptual things for the project. Once again, my name is Niall Coates, and if you want to see more of my work, you can always check out my website. There's a 15 part blog post about this project that goes even more in depth. There's also some Max MSP visual scripting, more sound design work, and a cool audio occlusion system that I built in Unreal. If you have any questions about anything, you can always drop me an email. I'm more than happy to chat about audio stuff. And finally, thank you guys for watching.